Good afternoon. I'm Bill Gross. This is our probate mastery weekly call. We do this every Tuesday at noon Pacific time or 3 PM where I am today on the East coast, Eastern time and every time in between. And then we post it on to YouTube and other social media. Um, the goal of this program is really for helping people who are in the probate mastery alumni program. The idea is that you're part of a community and that we want to work together and help each other become more successful and help each other somewhere else's, or if you're investors, buy more houses and either way, make more income and build more wealth together. I thought today I'd share something. I'm here at, I'm part of the EXP Realty and it's our national convention that brings more land on. I thought I would share with you guys a picture that I saw that kind of explains, I think the concept where when I work with agents and build a national team and I end up coaching agents through probably mastery as well as on my team, I also help agents to call me with questions and such. And I think this is the core where most people get stuck. I wanted to share that today, if I could. So share a screen and, and there it is. Okay. So can you guys see this picture? So there's four concentric circles. This was done by Jarek Robbins, who's Tony Robbins, I think oldest son. I don't realize he had a son, but his oldest son, Jarek is the head coach of success coaching, which is affiliated with Success Magazine, for those of you who subscribe to it, it's a great magazine. And he described the challenge in sales and building success. And I believe it really, when I was watching, I said, this is really the essence of probate for me. Why Chad's approach to this resonated to me in a way that other people's coaching didn't. So it's been kind of hard to see, but think of four circles. The inner circle, the smallest one is self. And the question is, how much do you care? When we only care about ourself, we're playing a very small game. It's not hard to play by yourself. Animals only play for the most part themselves or maybe their families. That's most real estate agents. That's get me a property, get me a listing, get me a deal. Playing at a small level. The next level, if you care more, you care about the, yourself and then those people who serve you. Now, I'm not an expert in marriage. You actually have a guy on the phone who's a pastor, but I can give marriage advice because I know what not to do or I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm not saying I do it. But I do know about a marriage is when you're just being married because it serves your needs or your interests, that's a tough marriage. That's a small way of playing marriage. I'm going to get married because she makes me happy. I'm going to get married because she fulfills me with certain physical or other ways. Caring about people who serve you. Caring about your kids because they serve you, not because you want to give to the kids to help them grow. The third level is caring about other people in your community, your family, for example. This is the higher level of marriage. I care about my wife because I want to help another person go through life and be successful. Or we're one person that we want to together work on the community or the world or children, helping your children go up because you take pride in seeing them grow, not the way in the state, your house to serve you because you want to build a better world and future world. And then the higher levels outside of those people, they even touch you. It's helping your community, your country. When people serve, like Winston was a Marine. When people serve in the military. Now, of course, there are, you can serve because you want to kill people. You can serve because you want to work with your buddies. Those are levels of service as well. But when you're in the military and serving because you want to save the world from World War II, from the Nazis or from whatever, you're serving all aspects of life. That's even beyond people who know you. And you hear this all the time of service members being touched by the meeting, let's say, a family in a foreign country that are refugees or victims of the military going on. That's the highest level. When we serve other people who don't even serve us, we don't even know who they are. And to me, this summarizes probate done the right way. When agents call me just to look, well, how, what, how do I, what script do I use to get a deal right away? Of those four levels, what level are they focused on? When you're an investor, yeah. just to make money, regardless of how you treat the seller, what level are you working on? Level one, two, three, or four. You're on level one, right? One. That's where agents struggle. That's where investors struggle. If you only help people who help you, it also is a struggle because it's really just a bigger form of yourself. The reason what resonated for me with probate mastery and which Chad's coaching was, because now I'm going to find people who I'm giving value to. Yes, I make money. Of course, I'm not a, I'm not in this for charity work, but I'm here to make a fair fee for fair value created. And by the way, the more value I create, the higher fee I can charge. So I'm helping people more along the way getting help myself. 
And then some people take it another level. I know tra Chad's traveled to foreign countries to help people with the profits from his success in business. That's helping other people in life. But I really believe in probate. If you can focus on helping other people, I've said before, my first coach was Zig Ziglar. He said, you have anything you want in life, if you help enough other people get what they want. And I believe you can get off of yourself and your need for commission check and get into supporting your family because they deserve to be supported or get into supporting your community, giving money back to your community, helping other people, helping that seller out of a jam by making a fair profit. And I believe in reinvesting those profits in the world. I believe that if you focus on those things, if you notice those sacros get bigger, the circle's bigger, you become bigger, you will grow into that job. And I think that's why typically when people get married, they make more money because they need to make more money. When you help the community, your income tends to grow. My brother-in-law was just recently honored by a huge community dinner, 1,200 people paying $500 a ticket to honor him. It was a fundraiser, but he's made a career out of serving his community. And as a result, he's had tremendous business. He's the co-president of a publicly traded REIT, makes millions of his salaries, public information. He made, he's a salary of $8 million a year. That's a little more than I think because he's built a career serving other people. And along the way, he makes a lot of money, but he's always looking to help other people. That's my idea. That's my understanding of Chad's version of probate mastery. Yours might be different. You might say to me, Bill, that all sounds good, but I just got to pay the bills right now. And I would say to you, the fastest way to pay the bills is find some bigger reason than just you to pay the bills. Now you might ask me, why am I talking about mindset? I just want to learn how to list and sell a probate or buy a probate as an investor. And what I'm going to say to you is 90% of all transformation starts with your mindset. If you're at zero and you want to get to one a month, it started, that's a transformation that starts with your mindset. If you want to break through, that starts with mindset. Now, if you're up and running, I run a business. I'm selling properties, listing properties. I am also on this call to learn how to do individual deals along the way. And that's what we're here to talk about today. But I wanted to start and share with you, and at least get recorded, what I think is the fundamental problem most people have, which is they're focused on what's in it for me. And that makes this business for them very challenging. If you could focus on how can I help people? I think you'll find it to be a much better business. So I have some other questions to go over today. We got through our system, but anybody else have any questions on that or anything you'd like to add to that? Does that make sense? Bill, I agree with you a hundred percent. You have to go into it with the right mindset. These are not quick and easy deals most of the time. And if you're not going into it to genuinely help people, if it's just strictly money related, it's going to be an uphill battle. So I think that you're speaking from experience and wisdom on that. And, you know, I would use that same recommendation to anybody transitioning in the business. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you for, I always like when people agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's an assume when you agree with me, they're right. So thank you so much. Anybody else who disagrees, feel free to disagree. We can have a respectful conversation here. But Winston, you got your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to carry on with what the last gentleman just said. Zach, I guess is his name. We've both been in business long enough to know that we're speaking with people, whether it's on the phone or in person, when your heart and your mind is in the right place, they can see it, they can feel it. And it makes doing business in my it's so much easier and much more rewarding in the end too. And that generates more referrals. Definitely. Well, thank you. So it's like agree with me as well. It's good. I love when you guys agree with me. Feel free. If you agree with me, feel free to participate. If you don't agree with me, I'd like to hear from you as well. Yeah, Bill. Hey, Bruce. Yeah. I think maybe one easy way, this just came to me when you were explaining these different tiers, but basically I think that if you could recommend someone to estate planning, because there's a lot of people who just do not have estate planning together. And some of my past clients have not had that. So. I think that's a good segue and easy way to kind of start building up that those circles because that's really something that's important because if somebody dies and they don't have a will, it's we all know it's messy. Yeah. So I think I think it's something that people really need to put together so that they can avoid that chaos later for their family. A hundred percent, Bruce. That's great insight. And uh, Chad has talked about it and interviewed some people. I know in my probate, I also host, for those of you who may not know, I host a probate call probateweekly.com every Thursday. 4 p.m. Pacific. And that's my personal 
call. This one I'm doing on behalf of Chad and Probate Mastery, but I also interview their attorneys. Now, again, because it's my channel there, you know, I do support my own business. So I'm going to interview attorneys that I'm trying to generate business from and get referrals from, but I also interview attorneys around the country. And I'm always looking for attorneys in different states to interview. So I would just say to you, anybody here, if you have an attorney you'd like to have interviewed on that call, let me know. I'm always looking for more. But Bruce, you're 100% right. Helping your customers avoid probate by getting a estate plan, I think, is one of the best things you can do for them. If it generates business to an estate planning attorney who in turn refers business to you, that's just a win-win, right? The attorney gets business, you get business at the end. But more importantly, your customer avoids probate, which I think is they'll feel comfortable and safe and make more money. So thank you for the input. Sure. Okay. Anybody else on that topic? Just in general, the mindset and the importance of mindset. Anybody have any input or insights on that? We're coming from being a service. Raise your hand, hit the chat box on Zoom. I hope you guys all know that there is a Facebook group. It's so funny because when I talk to agents in my company or reading the social media, they think of Facebook as being so old fashioned. So a couple of things I want to say is I think that the Facebook group, Probate Mastery Alumni, is a fantastic tool. If you've taken this program, you have an additional tool that should continue for you learning going on. And agents go in there and ask questions. And we post this call there, we remind this call, but then also get agents who ask questions. So I thought today I would share some of those questions on the call today, and we could talk about them together. The one that came up that I thought was pre-probate leads. So Tony asked, pre-probate leads versus probate leads, which are preferred for listings and or investment opportunities or why? And somebody answered that they tried the pre-probate and they put a lot of time into it. And at the end, they found it not to be as productive as you might have thought and instead came to kind of reacquaint themselves with the importance of being of service so they don't use the pre-probate leads instead of probing. So my question, anybody here on the call, anybody have any personal experience calling pre-probing leads. Anybody here on the call try either call or mail to pre-probing leads or can share? Hey, Bill. Hey, Jessica. Hey, how's it going? Great. So we make it a practice to, we've started incorporating, I would say in the last two months, pre-probates here and there, not a ton. We're trying to just like sprinkle them into our database who we're working with. The conversation is a lot more delicate. And what we found is when we take this approach, the whole coming from a place of service, we're getting a much better reception once they get over that initial shock of the fact that we're calling in regards to someone that they lost. But when they see the value that we're bringing, they're really thankful that we've gotten to them before they even get to the court because they don't know about things like fee waivers. And for whatever reason, attorneys don't typically tell people about fee waivers uh, and then getting ready for that initial meeting. So I feel like it's less backtracking than some of the clients that we're working with that have hearings coming up and we're having to help them make sure they've crossed all their T's and dotted their I's before they're here. So it's well received for the ones that it's well received for. We have gotten hung up on, we've got called ambulance chasers and that. Yeah, there's going to be haters. So just the words you said real estate. So my team actually works. We have nine agents and we cover San Diego, Orange County, LA, Riverside, and San Bernardino. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you're busy. Yeah, for sure. My dad's been in real estate for over, I think, 46, 47 years. And the last 35 have been focused on probate. So. Who's your father? What's your last name? Uh, his name is Jerry Redmond. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah, he just exciting. moved over to EXP from Keller under me maybe six months ago. Well, well, welcome. Are you here at the shareholder? No, I'm driving my kids for, for summer right now. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, good. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I think you're one of the few people, it's nice to have it, that I've talked to that have had success with pre-probate leads. And I think you're right. It, it probably has to do with, their, with the attitude because they're sold as, well, here's a way you can jump the line and get business first. And I think that if you don't have a really solid service game to put together with that, then it, it can obviously offend people, cause difficulty. Anybody, and then Je Jessica, thank you for sharing that with us. And welcome to uh, your father joining us at the XP. How exciting. I think that. I'm gonna, the next question I'm going to get to is, I don't know what percentage of agents that buy the leads actually call them. This phone call, this Zoom call we're doing is encouraging you to make the phone calls. But I have a feeling that sometimes people pick an area and get it tighter and tighter in that 
strategy because they don't want to make the phone calls. They're scared to call the wrong person. You should never be scared to call anybody. Anybody on the phone is a contact. But my guess is most people, even who do the pre-probate, maybe mail postcards to them, but don't actually make the phone calls. And that's going to cause you to have a problem. If you don't make the phone calls, my guess is you can't get the business. The next comment I see from Steven in the chat box to everybody. So I guess I should feel comfortable sharing this. Steven says, I'm so crazy. I've been sitting on leads for three weeks and I haven't made the calls yet. Steven, can you unmute yourself and can we just chat about this? I'll give you a little free kind of pre-coaching on this if you're interested. Yeah, sure. I'm here. I'll tell you, I'm kind of, I guess, just researching a lot. And what's crazy is I can make cold calls like I have in the past. Bizbo's expired. I do a lot of mobile homes. I have no problem talking to those people or park managers. I really don't have like call reluctance, but this feels so very different from everything else I've done. I feel like, how do you say, just like really ignorant on it. And I've even called like some old folks homes. I've actually had a couple of, um, 55 plus deals where they moved someone into hospice and then had to sell the dad's house. And I had one where they moved the dad into the daughter's house and then sold his duplex. But those were kind of just by accident. Right. You're gonna, if you're making phone calls, you're going to get those, right? Yeah. If you're calling expires or cold calling or any other format of dialing, you will occasionally get just about every, just mathematically speaking, you're bound to get somebody whose father died yesterday. I've had that happen. Just cold calling, right? If you call enough people, I used to call 40 people a day it was my contact call. You're bound to talk to them, correct? Mm -hmm. and, and you're bound to talk to people in 55 and up housing situations. And maybe they're having, they have terminal cancer. You're going to get some of those accidentally. You get all kinds of stuff randomly when you make phone calls. But the question is. Why do you buy the leads and not make those phone calls? When I think through it and I try to imagine it, part of it's the vendor list. It's really hard for me to get contractors that, you, that I trust. And I feel like I have to have that since that's like one of the options we really have to present. And uh, just in general, those are hard people to find. People who trades, contractors, even like a plumber, lawn care, that stuff is really hard to get out here. I mean, if you do find someone reputable, they can't do anything for two or three months. Where's out here? Where do you sell real estate? Salt Lake City, Utah. Great. So let me give you guys all a clue. Don't wait till you have your vendor list to make your phone calls. Don't think you need to. So here's the thing. And I heard, I believe I heard Chad make this conversation with somebody else, but I've used it ever since I've kind of made it my own in, in my coaching, which is this. What Chad's telling you to do is to have a team. Don't think because you don't have a plumber or a painter or whatever, that your team is incomplete because Who's the most important member of your team? You are like I am. Steven is. Yeah. You are, right? Yeah. So here's the thing. If I said to you, Steven, right now, pick the one that's hardest to find. Let's say it's a plumber. You can't find a plumber in St. Lake City for a few months. Okay. Something like that. If I said to you, okay, I have a listing right now. I'll give it to you. It's a million dollars. I have to sell it so we can list it at 900. I'm going to pay you full commission. I'm going to that's five or 6% in your market area, full commission plus an extra percent. Then I want to get sold right away, but you have to have a plumber at my house today by five o'clock PM. Could you get a good qualified proper plumber there by 5 PM today? If that was the case, yeah. let me make it easier. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a million dollar, dollar check. Could you get the guy there by today by five o'clock? Yeah, it'll happen for sure. For a million dollars cash. Yeah. Yeah. So, so think of the mindset that it's not, even if I gave you the best plumber in Salt Lake city and he was my brother and I made him promise to you that you're his VIP client, you have his phone number 24 seven, he'll be there just for you. That doesn't come across to the customer unless you display that confidence to your customer. It starts with you. You either are have a guy or gal, or you'll get a guy or gal to solve whatever problem they have. That's your job. Right. And in some cases you have that name and number ahead of time. And other times you're going to find, and this is, you've been on longer. If you sound younger than me, I think everybody sounds younger than me, but there are times I think I have a great vendor. Seriously, to put You think you have the right vendor on your roller decks. And you'll call one day that vendor's out of business. He's died, he's sick, he's on vacation, he's this or she or whatever. It's not the vendor, it's you. 
And if you really got that, the confidence, the list would never stop you. Yeah, that makes sense. That's just a decision you have to make. You look in the mirror and say, I'll do whatever it takes to make my customer happy. And once you do that, the vendor list becomes part of the tasks, but the job is now covered because you commit to making it happen. So everybody on the call, raise your right hand, make this pledge with me. I will do whatever it takes to make my customers happy. I will do whatever it takes to make my customers happy. Knowing they'll never be happy. I don't control their happiness. I'll just do the best I can do. Knowing they'll never be happy. I can't control their happiness. I'll do the best I can do. There you go. Now you're all engaged. You'll have a great team. It's you. Send me have names and numbers. Send me dough. Okay, Steven? All right. Sounds good. So I was just in a great call today, or a great meet today with one of the top, top real estate producers and team leaders. And he talked about this whole story about the, mo the movie Cinderella Man. It's about James Braddock, former heavyweight champion. And at the end of the day, you just have to decide you're going to make the calls, no matter what. Right? How much it hurts, how embarrassing it is, how difficult it is. Once you make the calls, you'll develop the confidence. But there's no amount of Rolodex of vendors. There's no vendor list that's going to make you have the confidence to make the calls. You've got to just commit to doing it. Okay. Any other reasons why you can't make your phone calls starting today, Stephen? No, I'm just going to go ahead and make the calls after this. I mean, I already went through and highlighted the ones that are the PRs that are out of state. I figured they were probably my better ones to hit first. So make sure I call them first and then get the people that are different addresses put here in the state. If it's the same address is probably a surviving spouse, which to me probably wouldn't be as good. So that's kind of my uh, order of priority. So I already went through the leads, kind of organized them like that. Okay. So yeah, I'll good. do it. So make those calls come back next week. Plus, say you did. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Steve Martin says we haven't made cold calls yet. We're doing test campaigns and mailers so far. Steve, are you talking about? To pre-probates or in general to probate? This was to pre-probates that we, leads that we've been getting. We're actually the, by the new, newer kids in the group here. You were asking about cold calling at the time I put that comment. Correct. No, I got it. I understand. So we haven't done and cold so, calls because our leads have been skip traced. But I'm sorry, you're saying you haven't done cold calls because your leads were. Yeah, we got skip traced leads, but they haven't been DNC'd. So we were kicking around whether to, whether to, whether to try to get them. DNC checks so we could do either full calls or possibly ringless voicemails. Okay. Okay, good. So you haven't done it yet. So be interested to see your feedback. I would certainly encourage you not to text or drop, do voicemail drops unless you're calling the people. I just, I'm sure it works when you do millions of them. I just don't think in the numbers that most of us do as agents, the numbers make sense. And I think you're also going to inevitably cause yourself some problems, but that's just another discussion. So. But again, when you may start making those phone calls, come back to an report and let us know how the pre-probates work for you. I'd love to see more, more real world experience. Because again, my theory is that pre-probates are being bought more by people who are scared to make phone calls and somehow think, well, I'll just send postcards to these people. And I don't believe that the postcards itself are going to get the job done for you. Okay. Phil says Google and find larger or regional companies doesn't need to be personal. Okay, so Philip is giving some tools, but again, Philip, I think it starts with you making the commitment. If you're committed to it, uh, then you're getting, and, and somebody else said, well, Facebook groups for, to, again, to fill out your Rolodex. There's it, a one it's real, just, sorry, it's just a comment about trying to find a funner that, it, that if, if you can't find somebody or find somebody known to you, just Google it. And like you said, if it's a million bucks, you'll come up with somebody. Exactly. You'll find, thank you. But again, the, the answer is not. The Google or Facebook, which those are tasks, but answers first, you commit to it and then you'll figure it out. And we all have a pretty smart. And if you can't figure it out, come into the probate master group and they will answer the question and the other people will give you some good suggestions as well. Joyce says she's in desperate need of some coaching on making cold calls. I call Tom Ferry with no luck. I recommend his father's company, Mike Ferry organization. And they have something they call, used to call the phone, ooh, what was it called? I went to it numerous times where you went to their call center and got trained at the call center live. They now, I think it's sold out this year and now they only do it virtually, but it's very good and it's very cost effective specifically for cold calling. I would recommend of all the real estate cold calling coaching I know of, that's the best thing that you can purchase. 
So I would go to the Mike Ferry organization and take a look at their, uh, it used to be called the phone, what, what is it? Prospecting school. They changed the name. I went to about five or six of those in Vegas. Fantastic. Tony Smith was a coach. Fantastic. They still do a virtual version of it, which is obviously less expensive. So I would check that out. So, so uh, if you want to go to Mike Ferry and what's the name of the program I asked for? It used to be prospecting school. I don't know what it's called today. I'm going to say it's something like that, like the prospecting workshop. It's they have different programs, but those, I believe they have one that's live and the rest are all virtual where you make phone calls and they, it's like a zoom call thing, but they, he's always been the best on teaching cold calling. Mike, Mike Ferry. Ferry. Mike Ferry. And he's, is he on the Tom Ferry organization? No, that's Tom's father. And Tom used to work for Mike and they broke up and started his own company. And I think a lot of times coaching is a lot easier and more fun, entertaining. Mike's is much more fundamentals. And I think as a result, if you want to learn specific skill phone calling, I think Mike Frey does a much better job teaching that. Thank you. Sure. Glad to help. Zach, you have your hands up. How can I help you? I was just going to make a comment on the DNC piece. Uh -huh. I agree with you on the, I don't do the voicemails, the ringless voicemails. I don't do the text. When I do make the calls, to be honest, I don't pay any attention to the DNC list. Over the years, Chad's talked about it. A bunch of different people have talked about it, that when you're calling from a service standpoint and you make it as a very warm call, occasionally you'll have someone that flips it out and says, I'm on the DNC list. You know, don't try and sell those people just immediately back down and apologize and offer to remove them from your call list. But I think that you're missing a ton of opportunity if you're not making those phone calls. Because almost every one of us has requested to be on the DNC list. And how many phone calls do you get a day that are soliciting you for something? And I think if you take that warm approach and you put the client first, like you were talking about earlier, Bill, that really opens up an avenue to really increase your business. If not, you'll get all of these leads and find that most of them you can't call. Well, I, I sort of can't advocate calling numbers on a uh, call list. I'm not going to say never do it. What I would say is if ever you find, like you said, a hundred percent, right. The second they push back, don't argue with them. Even if you're right, don't, you don't want to ever argue with people anyhow. And I'm saying this as good mar marital advice that I struggle with myself. I'm not suggesting I've mastered this. I know the right answer. Never argue with my wife. I'm not saying I do that. It's the same with clients. Never argue with clients. It just doesn't make sense. And so if you're in that situation for sure, right away, I will say that there is a theory that says that real estate agents. Our example for the job call list in that we're not selling anything. We're just calling to see if they need either or need help. And I know that there are people who hold by that. I know there, there are people who get sued. And I also know that most agencies have a policy in the company that you sign and agree to. So I would just say, just be careful, make sure that you abide by all your company policies and all your appropriate office policies. But I will say for sure, even if you think you're calling someone you're allowed to call, uh, and I've had that before, I've had. Agents who signed up for my a class, I called them up to confirm and they'll say, yeah, I'm on the do not call list. Yeah, but you signed up for a class, you give me your phone number. So, but I'm not going to argue with mentally. I say that mentally, I go through those, those arguments. Now with my wife, I actually argue with her. That's a whole nother class on how not to be a good husband. But I would just say as a salesperson, it makes no sense to argue somebody because they're just not going to listen to you. I will say that when I go to the probate mastery alumni group, one thing that jumps off the page to me is how many people are looking for role play partners. So question, is there anyone on this call? And if you want to make a private, I guess you can just text me privately on the chat. Um, anybody here find a role play partner through that or anybody frustrated and not able to find a role play partner? I imagine some people respond to the post. Maybe they call you or text you directly or discreetly. Uh, or has anybody had success finding a partner for role play through that? And how's that working for you? Anybody can share with that for us? No? I used to teach when I was a manager for about five years with one company and then another year with another company. I actually used to host phone calling events in our office. We had a bullpen with like 50 desks with phones and we'd actually, and I would uh, actually teach kind of like a form of Mike Ferry's prospecting call. We called the phone blitz. And I did that five days a week for about four or five years. And I believe during that time, I probably coached more agents on call card than anybody. So I have a lot of experience in the area. I've thought about, often thought about maybe holding a specific class on probate cold calling. One of the challenges is that a lot of these coaches will recommend you get a role play partner. 
The problem is most rope, most people flake. You're very lucky if you find somebody who will consistently once a week or daily role play with you. I had a partner for years I role played with. We did every day at the same time. I think we did 7.30, 7.45. One of the rules was the other party playing the homeowner had to at least drop one F-bomb on you because that kind of warmed us up for the hostile customers we were going to talk to. We were calling expires at the time. But I did that for a long time and that particular partner we had for about a year or two really helped quite a bit. I was really very lucky to have somebody who was on the call. I will say I was much better than he was on the phone. I was much better at calling than he was. Sometimes people get hung up on, well, I want somebody who like me calls three hours a day. Very hard to find somebody to do that for role playing with you. Very hard. Within the Mike Furry organization, because he teaches that so much, there are a lot more people who make those phone calls, probably easier to find role play partners there. I think in probate, where so many agents are trying to avoid making phone calls, it's going to be hard to find role play partners. And I'm not saying you shouldn't ask for it. I am just saying, I appreciate the person who says yes. No, they may not be as good as you are, and yet there's your partner, and you can still learn from them. Maybe they can be more consistent. And if you're not as good as the other person, there's a chance to learn by showing up and being there on time and being a great partner. But anyhow, that was the one thing I noticed on our alumni over and over again. People out, and then I'm going back all the way through, you know, the last two years of comments, people just consistently asking for role play groups, role play partners, and a role play system. And I would say, it's going to be very difficult to find, not saying you shouldn't ask, but, and there are people who throw out names, but when you, what I would say to you is again, advice i learned, I'm not saying I, I practice this, but I learned this as a husband. When I was married, the rabbi who married us said the key to marriage, again, I'm not saying I do this, I'm trying to be humble here, but the key to success in marriage is not finding the right partner. It's being the right partner. I think that's true in everything in life. If you want to find the best role play partner, then you have to be the best role play partner. So for example, if I went to one at eight o'clock in the morning, every day at 7:55, I would hit the Facebook group looking for one. Hey, if you're ready to role play, call me at my number. And now I'm, I'm there, I'm warmed up, ready to go. And we can get started and make that phone call and be there the next day if you need to do it every day. So again, I would say focus on being the right partner. I think you'll find the right partner more effective that way. Anybody here on the phone call role play regularly with somebody on probates? I would like to. Okay. That was Joyce. Okay. Anybody else on this call role play regularly with the probates? I don't, but I too would like to. Okay. Well, there's Claire and there's Joyce. Why don't you guys connect? Just try it once, right? Claire, how do I find you? Well, go to the chat box and send her your phone number and Claire, Joyce wants to role play play with her. And again, one of you is better than the other, I wouldn't let that be the problem. One of you is flaker than the other, I wouldn't let that be a problem. Just pick a time to show up. If they're not there, you can still role play by yourself. I guess about being the right partner, not fighting the right partner. Okay, great. Well, look at that, I'm a matchmaker right, 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 in, right in front of you guys. Okay, any other questions, challenges, problems, what we're gonna see? Anything else on the website? Again, if you're a probate mastery alum, go to the probate mastery alumni group in Facebook, great resource. I go on it daily. I see leads. I see people with questions all the time. Need help. And so let's see, we've got a couple of answers. Hold on here. It's challenging to get committed partners. Renee says, yes, Renee, you're right. It's always hard to find partners. It's easier to be a partner. Joyce put your name in there. Great. Carrie's looking for a role play partner in the central time zone. See, it's always interesting. We create, no offense, Carrie, but you want one in the, in the central time zone. Does that mean you wouldn't take a role play partner if they happen to live in Pacific, but they're willing to call an hour earlier? Right? Just be careful. Just notice the wording you use. So you can put out there, you want to be whatever it is, 10 o'clock central time. I would put eight Pacific, 10 central, 11 Eastern, or whatever the right times are. I don't know about in central, whatever that is. Just put all four time zones there, but look for partner in those spots that you want. Put your name, your phone number, and the time that you're committing to call and find somebody. And again, I appreciate Chris, name and phone number, but how about put a time zone a time on there that you want in your time zone or put all four time zones to make it easy to track somebody to join in with, uh, with phone call. Okay. So if I see it's not tending here, maybe we could do a phone call session. I've had something to think about a uh, cold calling. Okay. Any other questions, challenges, or problems for today? Got a few minutes left. Anybody? Was this helpful talking about pre-probates? Was it helpful talking about role playing a little bit? Yes. No. Anybody here? Is this on? 
Hello? You guys are all busy writing up new listings and I, right the, the purpose? It helped me. Seriously. No, I, it's funny. I took three listings last week, a land listing and two mobiles. So I'm like, no, this is, I just needed someone to be blunt with me because I work at home. I don't work with anybody. I have the TC, but you know, it can work. So yeah, I'm excited to make some calls and come back next week and say what happened. Great. I look forward to it. In the meantime, put your results if you want in the probate alumni page as well, if you look at me some help there. Okay. Question from the Facebook. You're welcome. I'm glad to look at questions in the Facebook group. Somebody thank me for that. And to practice role play. There you go. Marcia puts out there, look for a role play partner. She puts her name and she's in Los Angeles. But again, Marcia, you don't care where they are. You care what time they are willing to role play. Put the time that you want in your time zone and you'll find somebody. Terry asks, hasn't got the link to this call two weeks in a row. Kat, if you can help Terry Shell for the link for this call. But Terry, I'll also direct you to the Probate Master Alumni Group has the link to this call as well every week. Okay. Okay. I think it's, that's all the housekeeping and I don't see any questions. So we'll wrap this up. This is our Probate Mastery call. We do this every Tuesday at 12 noon Pacific time when I'm in Los Angeles or 3 p.m. Eastern, like I'm here today in Orlando, Florida. And the goal of this is to every week give you some additional resources as you launch your business in probate real estate or probate investing to be more successful using, like utilizing the coaching the chat's put together for us. So look forward to working with you. We do this every week. I also host a call probateweekly.com on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm Bill Gross. And if I can help you, feel free to reach out there. I also have a Facebook group, Probate Experts. Love to have you on that. Oh, and it reminds me. Great free resource, executorium.com is a resource for, it's designed for executors of estates. But I happen to know the developer of the website and he's looking to fill out the Rolodex of people. And so if you're interested, you can go there and get a free listing to promote yourself, as well as offer that to your clients, like attorneys and accounts and such. So executorium, the executor in like a place where executors would hang out. I guess is an executorium and there's a link in the chat box. Okay. Check it out free link. Have a good resource guide. You might find an attorney there in your area that you might want to work with or an accountant if you refer you to some business. They're on there for a reason. So I would reach out to them and see if they can help. Okay, guys, we're wrapped it up. We'll see you here next week. In the meantime, if I see you, continued success. Good luck. I'll report back on your progress and your phone calling and make today your best day ever. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.